Welcome to Cathedral of Praise, the place of praise and power. I want you to put your hands together. Let's go. to bless the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. Stand all over the house. Come on. Whether you're in the sanctuary, whether you're at home in your living room, your kitchen, your bedroom, can you take a moment to stand and give God praise and honor? Come on. For what the Lord has done. I'm talking about the same God that kept you all week. I'm talking about the same God that woke you up this morning. 
I'm talking about the same God that gave you the activity of your limbs. I'm talking about the same God that clothed you in your right mind. I'm talking about the same God that gave you peace in time of trouble. I'm talking about the same God that healed your body. I'm talking about the same God that delivered you. Is there anybody here that don't mind giving God praise and giving God worship this morning? Come on, somebody lift your hands in this house and let a sound come out of your mouth. Come on. I said, come on, lift your hands and let a sound come out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, we in the sanctuary, we might as well bless him. We in the sanctuary, we might as well give him glory. We in the sanctuary, we might as well give him praise. I learned over the past few months that it's something about thinking. And the fact of the matter is when I think of the goodness of Jesus, yes sir, and all that he's done for me. Well, boy, what has he done for you? He woke me up. Well, boy, what has he done for you? He healed my body. Well, God, what has he done for you? He kept me and protected me. Well, God, what has he done? He kept me over things to see and unseen. Well, God, what has he done? He kept me from COVID. Well, God, what has he done? He kept me employed. Well, God, what has he done? He made a way out of nowhere. Is there anybody here that don't mind giving him glory? Yes, God. I said, is there anybody here that don't mind giving him praise? Come on, we just come off a fast in the consecration. And I know when the sacrifice all we don't something so important this week so since God was kind enough to bless you since God was kind enough to keep you I tell you to lift your hands and give up for it yes God come on saints of God I said I tell you to open your mouth and give up for it I said open your mouth and give up for it come on saints I need to hear a sound in here because when we open our mouth God moves I said when we open our Take a moment, no matter what's going on around you, to just make it personal and say, I just thought about how he killed me. Can you just take a moment and make it personal and say, I just thought about how he healed me? Yes, God. I said, can you take a moment and just say, I just thought about how he made a way. I didn't know how that bill was going to get paid. I didn't know how rent was going to get paid. I sure didn't know how the water bill was going to get paid. But because of the grace of God, God. God, we thank you for our lying down last night and our uprising this morning. Lord, we want to thank you for giving us the activity of our limbs. Father, we want to thank you for even clothing us in our right mind. God, as we come to this place this morning, just to give you worship and just to give you praise, Father, we pray even now that you would extend your grace and your mercy towards us. Now, Father, we pray that you will forgive us of any sin, any wrongdoing that will cause these prayers to be hindered. Father, we come, God, not bearing our 
issues and our burdens. But God, we came today looking for a touch from you. God, we came today giving with expectation, God. Because God, we need a little more strength today, God. And Father, we pray as we come to worship you today, as we're watching this live today, that God, you will come see about your people. Father, somebody is struggling already. Somebody is ready to give up already. But Father, we pray even now, God, that you will hear their cry tonight. Father, we pray even now, Lord, that you will heal their bodies even now. Father, we pray for broken marriages now. And we pray that you will send your healing power. Father, we pray for broken relationships. That you will send your restoration power. Father, we pray for mothers and daughters. We pray for sons and fathers. And we pray that, God, you will mend broken hearts now. Father, we pray even now, God, that you will let unity abide in the body of Christ. We pray even now, God, that there will be no more division. But, God, we pray that even now, Lord, that there will be unity in the body of Christ. Father, we pray even now, Lord, that you will give us the strength to stand as one. We pray even now, God, that you will give us the strength to move forward as a unit. We pray even now, God, that you will take us higher in you, God. We thank you for every door you open. We thank you for every opportunity you're given. We thank you for every promotion. We thank you for every increase. We thank you for all the favor. But, God, most importantly, Lord, we thank you for your Holy Ghost power. Most importantly, Lord, we thank you for your glory. Yes, God, the money is good. Yes, healing is good. But, God, we need your glory. Yes, God, everything we have is good. The cars and the houses is great. But, Lord, we need your glory. So, we pray even now, Lord, that you will come see about us, God, and send your glory and send your power. Now, Lord, as we come to worship you, as we come to praise you, we pray that you will touch it on the praise team, touch it on the musicians, touch it on our pastors. And, God, we pray even now, at the end of this service, that, God, you will take us higher, higher in you, God, higher in our knowledge of you, higher in our revelation of you. And at the end of it all, we shall declare that God, you are resulted, the devil is defeated, and we have the victory. We shall declare that God, you are exalted, the devil is defeated, and we got the victory. Now somebody open your mouth and give a prayer. I said somebody open your mouth and give a worship and give a praise like it's already done. Hallelujah. Our scripture today. Scripture today comes Psalms, Psalm 34. The Bible says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and they were light, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The word of the Lord is blessed. Let's receive our COP praise team at this time. Oh, come on, don't stop praising him. Did anybody come with a thank you, Jesus, Hallelujah. in your Hallelujah. heart, on your Hallelujah. lips? We just come to give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. And we come to give the God the praise. Come on. Yeah. We're going to make a big church choir.
Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. And it's because of that name we can stand, hallelujah, and proclaim that there's nobody like him. Hallelujah. There's nobody greater than him. No one wiser. No one stronger. No one bigger than you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we just lift it up? Can we worship in this house? Not waiting on the next song. Just open up and set an altar right before us. Yes, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. That's a place I can run and be saved. There is a name that can heal, calm my storms, peace be still. I can call on that name and be saved. There is no greater name than Jesus, Jesus, stand and proclaim, there is no greater name than Jesus, Jesus. place I can run and be safe. There is a name that can heal, calm my storms, peace be still. I can call on the name and be saved. The There is no greater name than Jesus, Jesus, stand and proclaim, stand and proclaim, there's no greater name than Jesus, Jesus, stand and proclaim. No. 
something about the name Jesus. Y'all act like y'all know it. It is the sweetest name. Oh, I know. I know. Something about the name. Something about the name Jesus. Something about. Something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name. relationship with God is deeper today than it was seven days ago. Amen. Grab your Bible, saints of God. And we're going to go to Mark chapter 9. I don't normally read a lot of verses, but I want to read verses 20 through 29. chapter 9 verses 20 through 29 when you have it just open up your mouth and shout amen. amen if you can stand on your feet just in the reverence of this word the text says and they brought him unto him and when he saw him straightway the spirit tear him and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming and he asked his father how long is it ago since this came unto him and he said, of a child. And oft times it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, Jesus, please have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, somebody shout, all. All things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, but please help thine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him, and he was as one dead. And so much that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him a question privately. Why could not we cast him out? And verse 29, he said unto him, this kind can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. On tonight, I want to come from the subject on this beautiful Sunday night, this kind. 
now. Do me a favor, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this kind can only come out by prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. You may take your seats. I'm excited if you, even if you're not. Somebody shout it one more time and say, this kind. This kind. Uh, in, the book, in the book of Matthew, Jesus gives us a very uh, distinctive description of how we should fast and pray. Uh, and I believe that when your heart is not right and your motives are not pure in fasting and praying, that will um, determine the type of results that you receive when your fasting and the praying is over. If you're praying just to be heard, then you've already received your reward. Uh, if you're fasting for attention from other people, then you have already received your glory while Jesus is in Matthew. He tells them, don't do these things for people and then go out in the streets and tell Everybody, you did it for somebody because when you do that, you shouldn't look for a reward from me because you've already received your reward. He tells them that when you do arms or when you help people, don't run out and tell everybody that you help them because if you're looking for credit from people, then you have already received a reward that you deserve and you're not going to get anything from him. Uh, doesn't that sound familiar of the people that we deal with on an everyday basis? Uh, you have people that will tell you or let you uh, have something or they will give something or they'll tell you, let me know if you need anything from me. Then when you let them know and they do it for you, they go and tell everybody what they did for you just to receive credit from people. Uh, but Jesus says, when you do this, you should do it in secret, and then in return, I reward you openly. Uh, when he's teaching in Matthew, he continues to teach, and he goes on to talk about prayer. He says that when you pray, don't pray as the hypocrites do, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the street, and they do it because they love to be seen by men. And because they love attention from people instead of me, they have no need of an award from me because they've already received their reward from people. Um, but he tells them that if you learn to pray in secret, somebody shout secret. He says, then I will reward you openly. He says that when you pray, don't be like the heathen because they are good with their talking. But when you pray, you can pray as such. Our Father which are in, come on, y'all know the prayer in heaven. What? Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but what deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom y'all don't know the prayer the power and the glory forever what amen he says if you're going to pray then you should pray as such he keeps on teaching in Matthew sister Brittany and he says I don't only want to teach about giving alms and prayer but I'm gonna teach you about fasting he says and when you fast don't do like the hypocrites do and they go around with a sad countenance on their face in other words he's saying don't be walking around with a sad face looking for somebody to ask you what is wrong with you so you can turn and tell them you are fasting he said for them to feel sorry for you because if you are seeking attention then you've already received your reward he says but when you are fasting anoint yourself do like you do in the morning and wash your face so that when people see you they can't even tell that you are fasting he says and when you reward fast in secret there's that word again then the Lord will reward you openly so he wants us to pray in secret he wants us to fast in secret he wants us to give to other people in secret that he might put your miracle on this place sister Shailen because you made it through the Past and the consecration and the praying and you did it without complaint you did it without looking for attention from people God said it's going to cause for your miracle to be 
exposed and this kind of miracle that he is going to do for you it has never been done before because it can only come through by prayer and by fasting I don't know who I'm talking to tonight but the door that God is going to be open for you is going to happen because you pray the miracle that God going to drop on you tonight is going to happen because you fast the open door that God's going to allow to you receive is going to happen for you because you made it now I can tell right now who did the praying and I can tell who did the fasting because you would have been excited that God going to drop something on your life because of your sacrifice and tell your neighbor say this kind can only happen by prayer and by fasting somebody shout this kind yeah I'm gonna touch your row in a minute somebody do me a favor and say it one more time and say this kind this kind this kind Yes, fasting, a saints of God, fasting, it is essential to not only to the believer, but it is essential to the body of Christ as a whole. A praying should be a part of your DNA. These two can happen separately, but most time when you talk about prayer, you talk about fasting. Or if you talk about fasting, then you talk about praying. So we understand that prayer and fasting, both of them can go hand in hand uh, because for me I sacrifice from the table to hear what God is saying to me while I'm on my knees I push away my plate to hear more clearly what he would speak to me when I get down on my knees and I hear him more clearly when my flesh is empty from natural food because what happens is that you're fed by spiritual nourishment so while we have I've been praying and fasting all week. All I could hear the Lord say to me was, you shall see results. If you want to hear God clearly, then you must learn to sacrifice the pleasure of natural substance so that you can hear him talk to you when you begin to pray. The Bible would record that Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. After he gets to the wilderness, brother Javon, the devil shows up and he tells Jesus that if you are the son of God then cast these stones into bread. Jesus looked at him and said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He goes on and Jesus turned or the Satan shows him and says you these angels shall have charge concerning thee and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest that any time that shall dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus tell him, Sister Gwen, not thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. The Bible would record that the devil takes him upon a high exceeding mountain. And he tells him, you can have all of this. It can all belong to you. If you fall down on your knees and begin to worship me. Jesus looked at Satan and said, thou shalt worship the Lord thou God and him only shall I serve. Then the Bible says he's been fasting 40 days and 40 nights and when he resists the devil the devil leaves him and sister Ashley angels show up and they start to minister unto him and it's because he has to get somebody to shout results y'all ain't get happy enough off of that well Mordecai told Esther that God may have given her the position in the kingdom that she had a sole purpose for saving the Jews she agreed to approach the king but she told Mordecai to spread the word to the Jews that they got to go on a fast for three days without food nor drink and she was going on the fast as as well. Esther was accepted into the presence of the king and she helped save the Jewish people because of her fast. Somebody shot results. Y'all didn't get happy enough off of that. King Darius signed a decree that no 
somebody could pray to God in for 30 days nobody but the king could open up their mouth and pray to God for 30 days the people who wrote the law they already knew that Daniel he prayed three times a day and the punishment for breaking the law will back you you would be thrown into the lion's den the Bible says that they heard Daniel pray so the king had no choice but to throw Daniel in the lion's den he get put in the den King Darius goes on a fast and when they came back to see if Daniel was dead the Bible says that the angel of the Lord showed up to the den and shut Daniel his mouth. Anybody here know that God of sin results? When Jehoshaphat thought he was going to die, the Bible says he put on a fast, told the people to pray, and the same people that wanted to kill them, they killed themselves, and they got results. When Paul and Silas was locked in jail. The Bible says that they prayed and sang praises to God and suddenly there was an earthquake and the prison doors came open and they got results. Well guess who's been fasting? Guess who's been praying? Guess who's been consecrated? That will be me. I need you to tell somebody your promotion it's already here. Your healing is in motion. Your breakthrough is already here. And after tonight, you're gonna see nothing but results. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we're gonna get results. Y'all check your seat. I was trying to be calm. Do me a favor, jump on your feet. I say, I'm gonna see results tonight. Yes, I got a little while more here. A Jesus, 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 Jesus. A Jesus in the text. In the text, he asked the scribes. He said, "Do you have a question?" A one ran up and said, "Master, I brought unto my son. I brought unto thee my son, who has a dumb spirit. I need y'all to open." Open up your mouth and say dumb spirit. Make sure you remember that. That the son has, that the daddy says one spirit and that is a dumb spirit. He says and this spirit that has taken over my son. It has put his life in turmoil. He said as a matter of fact my son no longer has control over himself. But the spirit that is in him is is controlling him and whatsoever it taketh him he cherished him and he begins to foam at the mouth and he gnashes on his teeth and pinneth away he said and I spoke to your disciples to cast them out of my son and they couldn't do it he answered them and said oh faithless generation how long shall I be with you and how long shall I I suffer you. Jesus told them, bring them to me. Someone open up your mouth and say, that dumb spirit got to come out. Yes. A study would suggest that, uh, that when he says, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? A study would suggest that maybe he was talking to the scribes. Or some feel that he was talking to the faithless father. Or some feel that maybe he was talking to the disciples that were walking with him. If you ask me, I personally believe that when he says, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? I personally believe that he was talking to the disciples. I could not find where it was recorded that the disciples went on a fast. 
And I believe that Jesus stayed as long as he was with them. They would not fast until he left them. But the one who is able to do the casting is the one who has already done the fasting. And Jesus has already fasted 40 days and 40 nights. A study would suggest that maybe because when he mentioned that this kind can only come by fasting and praying that he was even fasting at that moment but the one that is able to has the power to do the casting is the one who has already been fasting the text says that when they brought him to Jesus that immediately when the spirit saw him it began to tear the sun he fell on the ground and started foaming at the mouth the spirit is doing that because the text says here in the scripture that the spirit saw Jesus it didn't say that the little boy or the man at this point saw Jesus it says that the spirit saw him and it began to tear him let me pause right here saints of God because after the sacrifice you made when you walk up to people and they start squirming or when you walk up to a certain people and they start acting funny because of your presence saints of God let me encourage you and let you know it's nothing that you've done but the spirit in them is recognizing there is something in you that has the power to cast it out y'all ain't gonna talk to me tonight so when you walk up to a group of people who you feel should be comfortable with you when they start squirming and acting funny because you came in the room it's not the person it's the spirit that saw you that know you got the power to cast them out because even though at the moment it may not be the disciples that were fasting tonight I know who's been fasting and who's been praying so whoever you are if you've been fasting or if you've been praying God said tonight that your miracle is liable to take place tonight I need you to do me a favor and look down your road and say neighbor if you ain't been praying go to the balcony if you ain't been fasting go to the balcony you want to know why because the miracle is on this road I don't see y'all talking to nobody I said tell your neighbor the miracle is on this road your fasting was not in vain your praying wasn't a waste of time God said to tell you I'm dropping everything that you've been wanting for the last three months is happening on your road somebody shout tonight tonight I feel something pushing me somebody shout tonight tonight y'all sit down I got a little bit more and then I'll be ready but I feel this plane about to take flight in Matthew's I want y'all to get this in Matthew's account of the text he comes to Jesus and the daddy falls on his knees and he begin to ask for mercy in Mark's account of the story he tells Jesus if you can do anything I want you to have compassion on us what we must notice out of both the counts is that we know for sure that the man is asking for mercy somebody open up your mouth and to the top of your voice I need you to shout mercy 
Yes. A mercy sense of God. It is an act of kindness. Show from God towards us. Giving us things that we absolutely do not deserve. If you were asking me, he is asking God to show mercy towards them by saving his son from something that is trying to kill him. The daddy is looking at his son and saying, Lord, I need you to have compassion on me because there is something in my son that's trying to destroy his life. As a matter of fact, Jocelyn, he calls his son a lunatic. But the part that is important to me is that the mercy is not needed for the daddy, but the mercy is needed for his son. But Sister Shanita, he does not say, have mercy on my son. He says, have compassion on us. Because there is something special about a daddy and his son. There is something special about a mother and her son. Which means there is somebody that he loves. Dearly, that is dearly to him. But the spirit is about to kill him. And they don't have the ability to cry out for mercy themselves. Because he's been dealing with this since he was a child. I begin to even my own self think about if my own son lost his mind, what will I do? I'll jump over a valley, jump across a mountain, and do what I got to do to make sure my son gets some help. And there are some people that you live with. There are some people in your bloodline that need a miracle. And they don't have the capability or the strength to call out for mercy and ask God for themselves. That sickness that wants to take your family member out of here. You thought that you need to change their medicine. But no, you need to cry for mercy. That spirit that wants to kill your sister. You thought she needed a therapist. She might need a therapist, baby, but she need mercy as well. You thought that depression that was trying to kill your brother. God said tonight, you need to cry out for mercy. That low self-esteem that's trying to take your cousin up out of here. God said tonight, you need to fall on your knees. I begin to beg for mercy. That spirit that's been running through your bloodline that gave your cousin, your sister, and your children a generational curse. God said tonight, it's tonight that you need to beg for mercy. The very thing that's trying to destroy you and make you lose your mind. God said tonight, it's going to come to an end because for we leave here, we're going to beg for mercy. That neighbor you sit next to, that look like they're perfect and got it all together, but they're about to go crazy. God said tonight, when you beg for mercy, he going to handle every issue. Would you do me a favor and just be people? Mercy is here. Grace is here. Compassion is here. Yeah, I ain't talking to nobody. Talk to somebody you came with. I say mercy, 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 mercy. says that Jesus he asked the father well how long has your son been like this he looked at Jesus and said my son has been like this since he was a child which gives the indication that he's anywhere from a teen to an adult now can you imagine dealing with something anywhere 
life from 13 to 18 years the same spirit is trying to destroy you each and every day the same spirit you go to sleep with it and the same spirit you wake up in the morning with and for years and years it's trying to take over your life and this spirit has grown with you and now it knows how you think and this spirit it knows how you act and some days it make you foam at the mouth some days it make you gnash your teeth some days it push you all over the place because the spirit is trying to destroy destroy your life and the daddy looked at Jesus and he told Jesus that often turns the spirit away it'll make my son throw himself in the fire sometimes the spirit will it'll make my son throw himself into the water that he might drown but something it clicked in me come on down on the inside while I was preparing myself and I said to myself that if the son he's been doing this since he was a child and he's still not dead well that means that he was born to be a miracle so Pastor Paul as your leader and as your shepherd I want to speak to every parent that has a child that deals with depression I want to speak to every 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 parent that has a child that deals with suicidal thoughts I, 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 I want to speak every parent that has a child that deal with low self-esteem and let you know that the reason why your child is still alive is because they were born to be a miracle and all that fasting and all that praying that you've been doing it was a sustainer for their life but God said to let you know that after tonight that spirit shall no longer linger and your prayers are about to set them free the daddy said all of this is happening to my son he said but which lets me know that there is something in him that believes that there can be a change is there anybody here that I say Pastor Paul I've been suffering but I wanted to go crazy but I wanted to throw in the towel but I wanted to lose my mind but I wanted to quit but so go Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I said go, 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 and find something that I feel it now that you're comfortable with. Grab them by the hand, shake them and rock them, rock them and shake them, shake them and rock them, rock them and shake them, and say neighbor, let your faith. Let it speak for you. I don't understand it, but I'm tired of my family dealing with these demons. But I'm tired of watching my family suffer. But so that leads me to say this. I 
just got a one question Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here That will do like the daddy did? I say, but if You can do anything Anything for me Lord Have compassion On us And help us Lord I need your help I'm tired Of these demons Trying to destroy My future Lord I need your help Because I'm tired Of dealing with These generation of curses I'm tired Of being happy today And then sad tomorrow I'm tired Of going through these cycles Over and over Over and over Over and over Over and over again I'm tired Of watching sickness Take my family out Jesus said to the man if thou canst if thou can't believe not some things not partial things not half things but all all things are possible to him that believe and the bible says that the daddy open up his mouth and with a loud voice Gotta say like the daddy did Lord, I believe But hit my unbelief Because there's a part of me That needs your mercy There's a part of me That needs your grace What I love about the daddy He didn't cry out with a soft voice he let the tears roll down his face Open up his mouth I said, Lord, I believe But help thou unbelief I need for you to lift up your hands I said, Lord, Lord, I believe But my faith is dying on me because my situation is so hard Lord I believe but my situation is so desperate that I'm losing my faith Lord I believe but it's been bad for so long I don't know if it can turn around I said, neighbor, 
you're gonna get two miracles at the same, same time. Causes and cause promotions and raises, healing and deliverance, breakthrough and restoration, increase, overflow, whatever. You've been fasting. 
been sacrificing all you got. Grab your legs, shake up and rock. I said, neighbor, whatever you do, don't stop believing.
There's a praise in the room. Come on, say.
gonna give him the praise tonight. I've been asking for the same thing for the entire month. A $33 seat. I need everybody in this room to grab that $33 seat. Full recovery. Everybody in this room, get that $33 seat. Working on now, God. Working on now, God. Working on now, God. Working on now, God. Working on now. If you don't have GiveLify, download GiveLify right now. You can give by card, but you know I want everybody to touch the basket or the altar with your phone. You can feed in the praise, Church of God in Christ on GiveLify, or you can give by PayPal. You can swipe your card, whatever you do. Make sure you give this $33 seat tonight. We've been talking about Jesus all month long. The power in his name. The Holy Ghost. Some things come this, somebody shout this kind. Happen by prayer and by fasting. Yes, Lord. Everyone get this $33 seat. Get y'all off. Get that $33 seat and stand all over this room. Bless your sister, Fuente. Work it on now. Everyone standing, come on. Get with your car. praising when I came, but Lord, y'all done gave me some strength. I got my praise now. Come on, bring that seed. Father, we thank you for every seed that is going forth tonight. I pray right now that you will bless them according to your riches and glory. Do something crazy in their bank accounts. Touch their debit cards. Put it on their paycheck. Whatever you do, God, make sure that you give them a great return we believe that it is so, and that you can do anything but fail. In Jesus' name, somebody shout, it is so. I said somebody shout, it is so. Clap your hands and give God praise, everybody. say this kind comes by prayer and by fasting look at your neighbors and neighbor you are blessed and highly favored tell them again say neighbor you are blessed and highly favored shout it one more time neighbor you are blessed and highly favored then shout yes I am you may go in peace God bless you